All right, good morning, TikTok. Uh, I know it's been a little while since I posted here. I'm hoping to change that soon. Had a whole lot of stuff going on and just haven't had a whole lot of time to prioritize making content over here. But like I said, I'm hoping to change that. I've got some stuff in the works here and I do have something new here to show you. So I got this from Bridgecom Systems. This is the Anytone ATD 578UV3+. Plus. This is an analog and DMR mobile radio that is not a dual band radio, it's actually a tri-band. So if you look right up here on the box, it has 144, 430, and 222. The 222, the 220 band, it's a bit of an obscure frequency range. It's not something that's used entirely so much, but there are a few places, actually like here in the Treasure Valley in Idaho, that have a number of 220 repeaters up, so I may actually be testing that out. So you see here on the box, it does also say it has Bluetooth and GPS, kind of some nice extra features to have here. This one is an enhanced version. It's saying it includes airband AM receiver, so you can actually use this to listen to airplanes and their radios in your area. I've never actually had that ability before, never done it. I'll give that a shot with this one. Let's see how that goes. Down here it's saying, as far as the transmit range for this radio, it is, the box is showing that it is locked to the amateur radio frequencies. That is something that can be changed. These can be reprogrammed to work on the full receive range. You won't be able to transmit on AM, but you can get it to work on the full receive range on here as well. So if you use the MERS channels, if you use GMRS, or like me, if you have a business license, you can use this on those frequencies as well. So. Like I said, it does uh, does analog, it does DMR. Uh, it does also have encryption included for your business licenses. It will do uh, ARC4 encryption that's compatible with Motorola as well as AES-256. That's currently the strongest encryption that's available, at least known anyways, to civilians. And this, the AES-256 encryption on here is going to be compatible with Motorola DMR radios as well as Hyteras, Maxon radios, a lot of others out there like that. So, just taking a Another quick look over the box. So it is dual mode, analog, and DMR. It does crossband repeater. So crossband repeater basically means you can have it set up with two channels, one VHF, one UHF, and what it hears on the UHF channel, it's going to transmit on the VHF channel and vice versa. So you can actually use this to patch between two different frequency bands, which typically requires a lot more equipment than just one radio. So that's a pretty cool feature to include here. Analog and DMR or analog and analog, it will not receive two DMR channels at the same time. You've got 4,000 channels, full duplex, hands-free, receiving with transmitting. I'm actually not positive what that is. I haven't used that before. I'm going to have to check that out. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk about that in the near future. We've got the ability to hold up to 10,000 talk groups, 500,000 digital contacts, so you can download the DMR contact database off of radioid.net. And then you can have that loaded in here. And whenever you receive any DMR traffic for ham radio, you'll be able to see the name, the call sign, and the other information of whoever's transmitting. And we've got some other features in here as well. What's included in the box, so it's telling us we've got a microphone, we've got the mobile mounting bracket, we've got the DC power cable, GPS antenna, we've got spare fuses, the USB programming cable, and then the hardware required to mount it along with the user's manual. So, let's actually open it up and take a look here. So we're gonna try and do this without knocking the tripod over. We got a couple of AnyTone stickers here. And some paperwork that comes along with it. This is going to be from Bridgecom Systems. Like I said, I got the radio from them. They are sponsoring this video. I did get this radio from them for the purposes of making content here on TikTok, showing you guys all about it. And I'm gonna give you my uh, full honest thoughts once I've been able to get into the radio and really let you know what I think about it. I do have high hopes for this radio as it is. I do think it's going to be a great option for a lot of people. Got the operator's manual. Here's the mounting bracket. And right off the bat, this mounting bracket is actually kind of small compared to what I'm used to. And that's going to be a good thing, actually. So the radio itself, yeah, this radio is actually pretty small. This is much smaller than most of the other LMR radios that I've been working with. LMR is a land mobile radio. It's just kind of the official, what do you call it? It's kind of the official name for VHF and UHF radio within like the public safety and the business space. It's not all just ham radio. So we've got two knobs on the front right here. These are more of a continuous turn. So these are going to be your volume knobs 
for the A and B channel. So you can have two channels showing on the screen at the same time, and you can adjust the volume for each one of those channels individually. So if, if you want to still be able to hear them both, but you want to hear one more than the other, you can turn the other one down. Channel knob here, and we've got six programmable buttons along with the menu and the exit key. I'm not going to power up the radio in this video. We're just trying to go through an unboxing right now. These buttons do have a pretty nice click to them. So, like I was saying, this is actually pretty small compared to what else I've been using recently. Let's see what else I've got within reach here. So, this is a Hytera MD782. This is Hytera's mobile DMR radio. And the Hytera is actually significantly, not just bigger, but heavier as well. I mean, you do get a slightly bigger screen that is a bit nicer when you're trying to work with it in the car. Uh, you got two more programmable buttons on the Anytone. And you know what's even bigger than that? Let me see if I can dig one out real quick. Where is it at? This is an EF Johnson 5300. This is going to be a P25 mobile radio, old public service radio, public safety. Look at the size difference there. That is significantly smaller. So if you've got a smaller vehicle, something that's going to be not as easy, if you don't have as much space to mount a radio, this is going to actually be pretty convenient here. They do also have completely wireless Bluetooth handheld control heads for the Anytone 578. So that's another option there as well. So we got the radio there itself. Take a look over here. We've got some, just some of the mounting hardware, screws, washers. Not super exciting there. Here's the mic. Get the mic out of the packaging. So we've got a typical RJ45 connector on the mic. And first impression, there's a lot of buttons on this mic. Could be a bad thing, could be a good thing. It just kind of depends. You're gonna kind of have to get used to it. So you've got your regular push to talk here. So whatever your chosen band of the A or B band on your radio is, that's going to be your push to talk for that band. You also have a sub PTT button here as well. So that sub PTT is going to be for the unselected band. So you actually have the ability to transmit on either channel without having to change which one is your selected band. You've also got your menu button. You've got zone up, zone down, and your exit key here. So you can navigate through the menu using the mic along with a full keypad. I'm not positive if this radio has DTMF capabilities, I'll have to look into that. And we have two more buttons for A and B here. I'm going to have to look into what those are for, but I can't even press this with my finger right now. So we're going to have to figure out what those are for. Then you've also got up and down here on top of the mic. That could be for volume, that could be for channel. I'll check that out and I will get you some more answers on that as well. Once I actually get the radio hooked up, powered up, get my code plug dropped in. We've got the power cable here. So let's see, does it say here? It does not say what gauge it is. It does say it's a two millimeter. I'm not sure if that directly converts to the wire gauge, but this does appear to be either 12 or 10 gauge wire. That's nice to see. You do want to have that heavier gauge wire when you're running one of these mobile radios that's putting out 50 watts. You need to have that bigger wire in order to get the full power output and fuses on both sides. Again, that's nice to see. Less stuff I have to add in myself. There's that GPS antenna. That GPS antenna is actually going to connect right in here on the back of the radio. We've got a little SMA connector there for the GPS antenna, and then we've got an SO239 for the actual radio antenna itself. This one actually has a cooling fan on the back of it as well. I hadn't seen that yet. So that's gonna be nice to see. These mobile radios putting out that higher power like I was just talking about, they also do tend to get hot. So having that cooling fan there mounted along with the uh, these built-in heat sinks, it's gonna help keep the radio cool, keep it from overheating. Nice little design perks there. We've got the micro USB port for programming it. That is something that's nice to see. I like to see more of the radios coming out now that actually have uh, USB programming and not a proprietary programming cable. Just kind of keeps your options open. You're not limited to trying to find the specific programming cable for the radio and then have to keep it somewhere safe so you know where to go get it, so on and so forth. This one does have a it does come with a Bluetooth push to talk like a lot of the uh, portable Anytone 878s do. So this is something I've been thinking about. This might actually be nice for while I'm driving. My pickup, it's a uh, stick shift Tacoma. 
So one hand on the steering wheel, one hand on the shifter at some point, I'm not always able to be holding a mic. So if I could actually use the Velcro strap that comes with it, if I could potentially strap this to my steering wheel, it would actually make it a lot easier to use. So I may try that out, I might test it out. I actually don't know if I'm going to mount this 578 in my truck. Because it's got that crossband repeater, I believe the 578s can also do single frequency repeat on DMR. Single frequency repeat is a DMR specific mode where the radio receives on one time slot so on DMR, you've got time slot one and time slot two that you're programming into your channels. It'll receive on one time slot and immediately retransmit on the second time slot. So it's not like a simplex repeater where it's a store and forward type of uh, repeater, but it actually works like a duplex repeater like your typical amateur radio repeaters are. So that would be nice to have if this does work as a single frequency repeater then I can put this here at my house and I can have my own little kind of limited function repeater for my area with my business license. That would be nice to have because that extra having the 50 watts over five watts, that would get a lot of extra range out of this. So I'm gonna have to mess around with that and we'll see how well that works. What else do we have in the box here? We've got the USB programming cable and then we've got some of the last bits of hardware we've got the microphone hanger here and the screws that go along with it and that is everything that's in the box